Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This week, the Harbor Freight Hercules line introduces not just their first high torque, but their first ultra torque, or maybe the world's first ultra torque, as that's a new designation to these ears. And that's nothing to shrug at, as until now, the top cordless at the store has been their large footprint earthquake, which is still a brush design. So these two brushless half-inch impact introductions represent what is really Harbor Freight's new flagship impacts for the foreseeable future. And it doesn't stop there. At the same time, they're introducing new 8 amp hour and 12 amp hour 21700 cell battery packs. Definitely a certain red brand in their crosshairs, it would appear. And there's plenty of people out there wanting to see this disrupt the balance of power at the top of this cordless category. We have these and are able to shoot this episode this week thanks to our friend Jim over at Philly Fixed. Check out his video below for more info about him getting these from Harbor Freight, some nut busting tests, and he also takes these apart with some revealing findings there as well. So why two models with basically the same silhouette? Well, it appears Harbor Freight wanted to take on two of the main players from the top brands in one fell swoop. First is their 59398 high torque model, which goes for $200 retail and advertises 1200 foot pounds of bolt breakaway and 700 foot pounds fastening. Sound familiar? Well, I believe they've hoped it would because the industry mainstay DeWalt DCF899, a model that's by no means new but still sells like crazy, also advertises the same 1200 and 700 figures for about $50 more, historically. They make a point to use this very comparison between the models too. While the Hercules is 0.4 pounds lighter, it's also 9 inches long, which is about 0.2 inches longer than that DeWalt. And to better compare to brands like DeWalt, Harbor Freight is tacking a five-year warranty on brushless Hercules tools like these, standards, something I don't think they've ever done with power tools before, that 90-day standard warranty being something that we can no longer hold against them, on these models at least. And if they prove to even take it over the counter in exchange like they're saying, that might actually be a warranty experience that's hard to beat, even among most hardware store brands. Speaking of hard to beat, Hercules has its eyes on the top with their new 59380 Ultra Torque, a moniker I hope doesn't catch on, but perhaps it's like in the 2010s where we were suddenly making hypercars instead of supercars. I guess we'll find out today. Either way, they have their eyes on this Milwaukee 2767, the high torque that really everyone is after and trying to take a bite out of since it has since defined the category of super powerful half inch impacts for so long now. A model that's usually around $250, $260, not the $329 Harbor Freight's website says, but that's still some savings here before sales prices. The comparison here in the specs between blue and red, which we'll also be doing on the dyno, is quite mirror-like again. Though the fastening or tightening claims for the two are a bit different, Milwaukee goes as high as $1,000 for fastening and the Ultra Torque here listing as high as $900 instead and as low as $800 for a shorter 10 second test length, which is the first time I'm seeing Harbor Freight ever show their test length methods for numbers. Sure, 30 seconds, not really an industry accepted test and twice that of any old school traditional Skidmore run, but they have numbers for other test lengths as well. From a brand usually getting hosed by us in our ranking charts for not listing tightening at all, so we're often left going off of their usual sky high nut busting claims. Is our testing on this channel slowly creeping into marketing trends? That might be a bit egotistical of me to assume, but I'll just say, happy to see it. We'll take a look at those 30 second numbers coming up. So let's do it. Up first, our five second forward working torque test is the new high torque taking on the DCF 899 DeWalt. In good timing too, because this Hercules coming out just before DeWalt's new DCF 900 high torque replacement, and who knows that thing could just shake up everything on this channel. Or 60 over 424. Trading blows there for a moment, but the yellow team coming out on top for now. Next up is the new Ultra Torque versus Milwaukee. The length of the Ultra remains 9 inches, but its weight increases by quarter of a pound to 6.2 pounds now. It's noticeably larger than the smaller but way similar Milwaukee with a battery. We test with 5 amp hour packs usually on this channel since that's what comes in these kits when they're sold, but we will be visiting that big chungus 12 amp hour as well coming up. Here's what the Milwaukee can do in our five second working torque test. Now that 572 is quite a mountain above the Hercules high torque. Let's see if the ultra torque 
makes that difference back on screen in black. Five sixty. That's very good. This Milwaukee is one of the highest scores in this test we ever see. Doing well so far. Our next test is 10 seconds in reverse called Max Torque. Three tests performed in a median shown on screen like our last test. Here's the cheaper Hercules High Torque versus that DeWalt 899 again. $5.99 over $5.46 with the Hercules coming out on top, seemingly liking reverse more so far. Not bad. It's worth noting that DeWalt's aren't the most consistent tools to test with our methods, and with other $8.99 examples we've borrowed, we've gotten as much as $582 with median tests, so both pretty close to each other in many situations. And here we have the Ultra Torque taking on the M18 again in reverse now. Seven hundred and eighteen, just under the seven twenty-eight of the Milwaukee. Their choice of comparison between tools with these impacts seems like a good one to me, which isn't always the case. And the gap between the high and ultra torque models for effectively the same size tools it makes the teardown differences Philly Fix saw between the two models even crazier to me. Our next test is best case scenario: batteries freshly charged, their best runs. Here's the high torque taking on Dewalt one last time. Six twenty-seven versus six twenty-nine. It looked like the Hercules was going to pull it out of the bag, but the eight ninety-nine caught up in the end. I'll tell you, these two tools on this test are closer to each other than we get from a couple tests on the same exact Dewalt tool. Very similar performance. Last up in the testing series is the Ultra Torque. Once again, let's see it dethrone the M eighteen if it can. Seven hundred and seventy eight and seven hundred and forty for the Hercules. Looking at these curves, you could very much use one of these in place of the other for most tasks that we can think of in both forward and reverse performance. We've only had one other tool on this channel that matches this closely, specifically to the Milwaukee, and that's Hilti's new Neuron, which is a three hundred and thirty four dollar bear tool. So not a bad conversation to be in in this bunch. Now, there's still a bit of an elephant in the room. 30 second test, as claimed by Harbor Freight, and well, that 12 amp hour battery too. We can tackle two birds with one stone here by just giving it a go. 30 second tests, sort of as a standard, aren't really a thing, especially on a fastening claim, which has no historical basis for being used. And we're about to see one reason why. For one, it doesn't sound very happy. This is how a DeWalt sometimes sounds for us as well. But mainly, in the 30 second test, we see this. Around here we call the speed wobble, basically a feedback loop of vibration. Well, more of a procession that causes the tool to basically swirl around violently rather than stay in place and impact. This doesn't always happen with all cordless impacts, but is not rare on a long test like this and can even happen with air tools as well. The ultra torque, as we're showing here, is not exempt to this phenomenon. We've seen this from many other brands too, including Milwaukee on their mid torques. And this happens on a traditional Skidmore Wilhelm torque testing machine as well. Which is why you have to draw a line somewhere in the sand on test links. Long ago it was 10 seconds, and sometimes eventually as high as 15 seconds, and that's why we use it here. Keep in mind a test such as this starts at zero torque and then builds. For you at home it may be a bit different. 
So, in as clean a run as we could really put together with several attempts, the Ultra Torque did make 860, which is in a close relationship with the other advertised numbers versus what we saw as well. But overall, how did the 12 amp hour batteries do? Here's how the High and Ultra Torques did versus the Milwaukee using a same 12 amp hour 21700 cell type of pack. The High Torque, perhaps having a higher ceiling for improvement, picked up 50 foot pounds, and the Ultra Torque picked up about 40 foot pounds here. Again, matching that Milwaukee relationship most of the time on the curve. We've noticed somewhat less powerful high torques like the now old DeWall and new Ryobi seem to gain more from massive batteries, funnily enough. All right, let's settle this on a leaderboard with points now that we have all the data to really see who comes out on top. Starting here for now below the 2767, these two models test runs are turned into points as 56, 72, and 74, and 42, 60, and 63. They are both the same length, but the Ultra Torque makes a lot more power for not a lot extra cash. They achieve 82.2 foot pounds per inch and 70 foot pounds. Not so impressive, this figure. Their torque claims are a bit more convoluted, but we're loving the extra data either way if they want to provide it. Achieving a clean 30 second run was essentially impossible for us, but even then, it was close to this 740 versus 800 relationship, anyways. So we're happy with this 93% and 100% or max points for the high torque here. If someone somewhere in Harbor Freight's aim was to score more points with their fans for more accurate or honest torque ratings, they did it. And we of course welcome a new revolution in that regard. These two tools making nearly the same power but a 1 to 200 foot pound difference in rating here, based on the testing we do, that deserves something I think. Now these tools are more affordable but Eh, closer than they probably want to admit. I'm sure that five-year warranty is part of it. That's 48.4 and 47 points as a function of power and price. Even the numbers here saying the Ultra Torque is a better deal for the money, and I agree. That totals 425.5 and 382, putting the High Torque above the Flex here and above its DeWalt direct comparison. And the Ultra Torque, yeah, 0.2 points in front of the Milwaukee, which... I think is fair considering everything, but if we're looking at power alone between the two, we need to head over to our average power ranking, which is purely torque measured at each second across the run and averaged. Here the Ultra earns a 605 in its best kitted out form, which is down from the 629 of the Milwaukee, also needing a 12 amp hour for that performance. The Ultra also earns from us subjectively, of course, a 7.75 on the wrist breaking scale where a 10 is the most for bringing just really heavy vibration and jostling around, very similar to the 7.5 rating of the Milwaukee for basically the same reasons. The High Torque also gets a 6.0 to match the DeWalt, which got a 6.0 as well, which is just much more enjoyable to use. For me, the unsung hero of today is that 12 amp hour battery Harbor Freight is selling for 140 bucks with 21,700 cells. Their price compare here is wrong yet again, but in the other way this time, 12.0 high output batteries from Milwaukee are 250 bucks a piece. That's close to half the price. People with kids' power wheels rejoice. Harbor Freight's Milwaukee clone, I mean uh, Ultra Torque, yeah, they're very close to their mark. With the hammer assembly being within 0.4 ounces of each other, perhaps that's no surprise. But the high torque as well versus that DeWalt, basically the same performance we've seen from the more expensive Earthquake, but smaller and lighter than that, plus a larger battery platform. Of course, while we've been comparing versus some of the biggest names, those are also five, six, seven-year-old models too. Either way, this tool on the left with a 12 amp hour battery is 370 bucks, and this red one on the right is 500, with like 20 foot pounds between them. The best we've seen from Harbor Freight yet, for sure. Appreciate you joining us. Click subscribe to catch videos like these at least every Friday, and thanks for watching.